Hey, this is Robert, Big Guy DIY. I got a little tiny little project I wanted to get out. Get it out of my garage, even though it's almost winter, December 10th right now. But uh, this is stuff that I bought for my canoe, as you can see behind me. Being the size that I am, <clears throat> uh, my canoe flips on me real easy. So I've already gone over twice with it this season. So I'm making stabilizers for it. They're really simple to make. Uh, another thing you can call them, it was another name I had, but I forgot it. Well, let's just call them canoe stabilizers. How's that? So let me show you what I got and give you an idea what the price is or the cost that you would spend on something like this. Okay, let me switch this camera around. So what I have here are two flagpoles. So you're looking at $12.39 each. Got this at my local uh, hardware store. I got two T, two T's, fifty nine cents each. I bought these uh, Kufa, or what they really are is lobster pot uh, buoys. I bought four of them. So the idea is for them to be like that. When it's assembled okay i bought these off of amazon i think they're like 15 bucks each or 15 bucks for a pair so for those uh just plastic tube plastic piping the size of this uh see where's it doesn't say on here i think it's one one inch or two inch Oh, it's three quarter by well, that's a line. It's three quarter inch. And that's the outside diameter. Meaning from here to here. This T happens to fit into it. Okay. So it's a three quarter inch T. Now the aluminum. I also bought this at the hardware store. I think this was uh $15. This aluminum pipe, it's uh, six feet long, <clears throat> and it happens going by the outside. It, I should correct myself. This is not this is not an aluminum pipe. This is aluminum tubing. There is aluminum pipes and there is aluminum tubes, and the difference between the two is the way they're measured. Aluminum tube is measured on the outside of the um, aluminum pipe is measured on the inside they call uh, ID inside diameter this is IO outside or OI outside diameter <clears throat> also aluminum piping we can get this down Aluminum piping is much thicker than aluminum tubing. I have somewhere around here. I might have moved it. Aluminum piping. But I think I moved it. Oh, no, it's right here in front of me. This is aluminum piping. It almost looks galvanized, but this is aluminum piping. It's much thicker. I was using this to create a bumper for a snowmobile. So that's the difference. Um, I use aluminum tubing because I need the outside diameter to match the outside diameter of the plastic pipe. All right, so we're going to assemble this right now. So the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to cut my aluminum tubing in half. Uh, I bought this plank because I wanted it to be three feet out on each side of the canoe. So using a hacksaw, measuring tape, we'll give it a measure. I know it's six feet, but I still want to make sure because it can be off a little. Then dead on. 
So I'm going to measure three feet up. There's two ways you can cut the aluminum. One way is with a hacksaw. The other way is with a pipe cutter. I'm going to use the pipe cutter because then it's going to be completely even all the way around. Pipe cutters are nice, they're quick. There's a, a round blade. And what you do is you just line that blade up with your mark. As you can see the round blade here, that's your cutting blade. So there's my mark. So all you do is just turn this around tube and each two turns you go, you turn your thing only a quarter inch. Turn it again. Turn my thing a little. Keep going. There we go. All done. <clears throat> Next, this is going to be attached into this part of the T. Okay. The reason I'm using the aluminum on the arm going out from the canoe, this is going to be stronger than the plastic. Plastic's going to bend too much. So now I have to secure this. The way I'm going to secure it is I'm going to rivet this in. These are my drill bits. A rivet popper. works for those who've never used one here's a rivet what happens is as this tool pulls this rod it expands the top part of the rivet it makes it into a mushroom up here and as this enlarges eventually it'll get to a point where it can't go any further when that happens this is designed to break off and then it leaves just this part of the rivet in. <clears throat> and that way it won't uh, come out. So you put the rivet in. The rivet gun has specific hole sizes on it, depending on the size of rivet you're working with. So as I squeeze the handle, this might be a pop rivet already. It is. Pop rivet means the tail is already broken off. Let's try this again. There we go. When you squeeze a rivet gun, you can feel it pulling on the rivet.
didn't break off where it's supposed to. So to fix that, just take a pair of pliers, bend it back and forth, and there, it breaks off flush. All right. That's one way to do a rivet, using a rivet gun. As you can see, it's labor intensive. The next other way is a pneumatic rivet gun. Give you an idea how quickly this goes. Again, the, the holes are the same on this. You gotta change the tip, make it work. are pneumatic rivet guns are pretty much most of them are the same in design but to set harbor freight uh, I like it it's not bad I mean yeah it's not the most expensive rivet gun but the bottom line is it gets the job done and it has for several years now for me so I recommend that and harbor freight makes two of them two different size uh, pneumatic rivet guns so there are my two arms stabilize your arms <clears throat> now next is to cut the tubing for this these will go out here so they don't have to be that long you want them to go in about halfway and you just hammer them in so I'm just gonna measure it I had a measuring tape here so I'm gonna make them seven inches long Two of these for one, one come out here, one come out here. utility knife and just scrape the outside edge here to get off the fibers that are left from cutting a saw or left from when you're using a saw gives it a cleaner edge so it'll slide into the tee a lot easier. It also eliminates any sharp edges so it doesn't cut your hand, cut your fingers. These have to be glued into here. Okay, like so. You can use pretty much anything. This is uh, clear cement for PVC pipes. You could use that, but it's a little overkill. This stuff will, uh, well, no, it'll work. It's, it's thick enough. <coughs> so there's this kind. Uh, Gorilla Clear Grip Contact Adhesive. <clears throat> Excuse me. Elmer's Pro Bond, which can be used for plastic, foam, metal, wood. So it doesn't really matter. <clears throat> I'm going to use the PVC stuff.
Next are the flagpole. The reason I chose this, again, based on the inside diameter of the flagpole, matches the aluminum tubing. Okay, so I don't have to drill any holes. Once it's in, I can just tighten it like this. The reason I chose this, one reason is because of this. The other reason is because of the teeth. I can set any angle I want with this and know it's locked in place. Okay. Next are these. going out to the pipes. So what I'm going to do is I got a rod here. See if I had another one. I'm going to cut this rod and use it as a pin to go in and through and just hold it in place. I got a better idea, but I'm going to go back to what I was doing. So let's go back to doing this. Oh, this one fits tight. Interesting. Okay, this is what I've done. See the two holes I drilled in. I cut a piece of rod and I drove it into these holes. So it goes where well, you can't see inside there, but it goes through the pipe and holds these secured. I obviously do not have to do that for this one. They're in there tight. So my idea is this. Expanding foam. Because this hole goes all the way through and through this pipe. I'm going to do the expanding foam and just seal this whole thing in. I'm not worried about this end at all. So... For those who've never used expanding foam, it does exactly what it says. It grows. So you don't need a lot in here, 
but the expanding foam is going to also work as a glue. So as it expands into the PVC pipes, it'll also expand into the buoy and it'll glue itself to both. So it'll hold these buoys in place. The reason I did the um, rod into these is the buoys were not tight at all. So there's, there wasn't a consistency between the two. So, foam, oops, and masking tape. What the masking tape is for is, once I put the expanding foam inside here, I'm going to close off the ends so the foam will expand within. When it dries and you take off the masking tape, the end of this will be, uh, it'll have a hard surface just like the outside of these buoys. If you let the foam just push out, uh, and then you cut it, it's going to have an open end. Water's not going to penetrate it, but you'll still have like an open f end of the foam. So, shake this up and let's knock this off. Now, this foam is really, really sticky. So don't use your hands, or don't touch with your hands, because it'll, it's like uh, sap, like pine sap. Get it on your hands, it, it stays on there forever. So by blocking this end, it'll force the foam to expo, uh, expand this way into the piping. Okay, so both ends are blocked off. So the first part of our stabilizer is built. These foam cans since I use very little of it, are reusable. Take the hose off the uh, pistol grip. Put the top on this. The foam will continue expanding out of this straw. When it's done, just take a, uh, a coat hanger or a stiff wire and go through and you can break that foam up inside and reuse this. Same for this, just use a coat hanger or whatever to get the uh, dry foam out of there and you can reuse this versus throwing a whole can away. Here are the stabilizers. So the foam had hardened. I took the uh, masking tape off, riveted with a plastic T pipe, one inch, going through the entire center this it comes out to about here and then um, it's a plastic piping I have inside here going through and so I have the uh, PVC piping glued onto that <clears throat> by doing the foam obviously it adds buoyancy but it seals this all up the pipe through so we're not going to get any water coming through the piping and up through the T and so forth okay remember i use the flagpole for this end so what i need to do now is create the wooden brace that's going to go across this so let me set this camera up for a second now the one thing and i was aware of this the reason i use the flagpole and this flagpole has teeth teeth in it so I could set the 
know where I where I want this but knowing that the flagpole is not going to dip below this edge say down to here where it needs to be I need to put a bend in this pipe so I have a pipe bender we're going to bend it from this end so it'll come down probably approximately this far down into the water on both sides. <clears throat> I brought two pieces of wood. The idea is the, of the wood is I don't want anything to be screwed into this. I want it to be able to slide on, have a pin that holds it in place. When I'm done, I pull the pin. You can remove the stabilizer from the flagpole so that can go into the car or the truck and the flagpole mount is still through both of here and that whole unit comes right off so it, it protects the canoe so what i want to see is how long is this and i'm going to mark it i was thinking of tracing it too so i can get the width of it Maybe I'll just keep it kind of fat. I think I'll do that. I'm going to keep it fat. That way I got like a shelf here. Maybe I'll put something up here to hold the tackle box or something. So there's my line. Now I know how long my distance is. Again, I'm not worried about the width because. Both these boards are wider than the uh, part that carries the canoe. So let's go downstairs, or downstairs, let's go to the garage and cut this up. Here's the other one. I just used expanding foam. When I slid these on that pipe, I don't know if you recall, but I had drilled a hole through here that went through the pipe that's in the middle of this buoy. And then I hammered in just a thin rod that would go through the buoy, approximately four inches long. So this is not going to come off at all and then this just helps glue it in a little better at the same time. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the flagpole end off, place this to the side, and we're going to cut this end off because <clears throat> that is the length that we need to go both on top and bottom. Safety glasses. Sticks for starting firewood. <clears throat> this piece is still salvageable, so I'm going to keep it. <clears throat> now the flagpoles. I'm going to grab the other flagpole. I'm going to find my center. Piece is five and a half. My center is going to be two and three quarters. Now I don't want the flagpole too close to this edge. <clears throat> too close to this edge because it is pine. Pine being a soft wood. So if you're too close to this edge, this is going to be through bolted with stainless steel bolts. Uh, too close to the edge, 
there's a very good chance of the pine splitting. So I'm going to come in a little, well, call it a little. <clears throat> I'm going to go in like three inches. I'm just going to put in a small hole, a starter hole for where the bolts will go in. I'm going to be using two different stainless steel bolts as you can see through the threads. One is much finer than the other. The reason for the bigger one is when this is mounted, there's going to be greater pressure on this side to pull out. And if I use a through bolt that's <clears throat> too thin, I don't want to risk ripping it through the wood or even breaking it. I doubt I'll break it, but I do have a chance of ripping it through the wood. When it's mounted, the bolts are going to come up through the bottom. They have to be countersunk on the bottom because the bottom is what's going to be against your uh, the head, the uh, the rest, the neck rest for carrying the canoe. This is a uh, drill bit gauge, so you use this to measure what size bit you need to drill in order for this. For your bolts to fit so you don't want to have it too small or too large you you want to have a little room around it so it slides in now this side I, the word escapes me for a moment, the piece that goes on your shoulders, it's called a yoke. That piece there is going to be against here. So to avoid any scratches from these bolts, I have to countersink this. <clears throat> the countersink, look here, see how it's tapered? matches the head. So when I countersink it, this head's going to sit flush against the board. Now there's a variety of countersinks out there. This one here is a tool where I can countersink it, flip it around, drill it in. And then it also has different size uh, bits and countersinks. Let me show you the countersink. Okay, before, after, take our bolt. See how it sinks in? So now the yoke is not going to get scratched up. measurement of the yoke to see how thick the piece needs to be between these two boards. It's uh, 0.71 using my digital caliper. So going through my scraps of wood, so we're going to use this piece of wood in between here. So let me cut this to length. I'm going to glue it right there to create that gap.
I'm going to let this harden overnight. Come back tomorrow. Tonight I just ran out, get some hardware at the store. Nuts, bolts, wing nuts, stainless steel bolts. So, piece I here, glued on. You can see there's holes here already. Those are for the bolts that are going to come through. Now, in order to prevent this from uh, twisting, I'm going to have to fabricate a piece to go in here, just a square piece, and then one for the other side. At the same time, I'm going to trace this. Reason why is here, as well as here, are going to be two bolts with the wing nuts, which I showed you earlier with the hardware that I bought. A piece that's going to go in here is going to hold this in from sliding off. So it'll just clamp it. So I'm just going to do here, just trace this. And then trace it here. So that part's done. So I think you can see my trace marks. So we're having a bolt come through here that'll be held together with a wing nut. There's going to be a piece that will slide in here when this whole structures going on same over here here I have to install something so this will not twist when it's on the yoke next I have to get the pipe that goes in here set up you can see how this is working out. So I brought up my two outriggers. And this is the tool I'm using. You can buy these tools at any um, Home Depot or Lowe's or even your local hardware store. I would call the local hardware store because this one here is a uh, one inch diameter. So this is a large tool. Cost of this tool is $90. They come in sizes of a uh, quarter, half inch, three quarters, one inch. And it's called a conduit pipe bender. So it's aluminum head with a steel pipe. You can buy just the heads without the pipe so if you want you can buy you know keep the pipe and you can buy multiple heads for different pipes so this is something I need to do in order to get the uh, pipe bent you can see how high this sticks up I need this to be down approximately here the tape measure, I want to set the distance back. The mark I put here means the mark will be equal to the front of this fender. So I'm going to go back a good 16 inches. Now, how many degrees do I need to bend it? No clue. How's that for an answer? Just bend it and then see how it fits. Now 
as you can see with the flagpole, I'm up one set of teeth and I can go down one more set of tooth, which will bring this down another six inches. Well, it will be below this. So that's a nice aluminum tubing bends in these conduit pipe benders. So let's do the next one. We gotta match that bend. Number two is bent. So it's almost 45 degrees. It's about 40. So you can see my tracing mark here. Both sides. That's gonna, these pieces, as I said earlier, are gonna prevent this from twisting. So I'm gonna take a uh, pressure treated plywood. With my jigsaw and I'm gonna cut out <clears throat> I don't have to cut out this whole piece I just have to cut out a small enough piece to prevent it <clears throat> from twisting Here's the finished top piece that you saw in a time lapse. I changed the wood. Originally I was working with pine and I needed a wider piece than I was working with. So I changed it to poplar. This is a one inch 
by eight inch and then I ripped it down to be uh, seven inches in width <clears throat> so for an eight foot suction of poplar one by eight inch was twenty three dollars lumber is through the roof absolutely through the roof this piece probably looks familiar with you let me put it in better light you may be able to see my pencil mark here here and on this side so the yoke will sit against this so you can see how it's traced out and I'll show you with it on now how this works the top piece it has the uh, I'm gonna call them rocket launchers but the flagpole assembly will be through bolted to this but it's I've designed it to slide on to the yoke so with it through bolted you can slide this right on all right so let me clamp it in place and then the pieces I have cut out I label them. Oops. How's that? B goes with B. You can see I'm filling in the holes here. A goes to A. And C. See how I labeled it now so when the top piece is bolted to this it covers this you still have to uh, secure it on this back side so let's <clears throat> I'm gonna put it together bolt it together and uh, show you how it looks we're through bolted now all the way across you can see the gap the yoke's going to slide into three inch stainless steel with fender washers both sides to displace the load the pole those three a b c pieces you can see how they're going to go in so let me uh let's install this installed it's just hard to put these spacers in at the same time while holding a camera so the way these are being held in is a wing nut the lock washer and then I got a regular fender washer to kind of pull everything in I'm not worried about the top because this is a harder wood than pine so this is just going to pull down on I can't reach the other side so we'll show you one side and there you go you can kind of see how low it goes or I can go lower with it when I'm done with it or I don't need it. Uh, 
I can put it up bound. And when I'm ready to transport it, just pull it out. And there we go. When I'm ready, if I want to take this off, uh, the whole point of this design was for it to slip on and slip off as needed. I need this because I'm a big person. Being, being uh, 6'3 and tipping the scales at 300 pounds. Uh, and this canoe is only 16 feet long. So, yeah, I need the outriggers for this to keep uh, the canoe from tipping on me. I've already tipped this one twice. And then my father used to have a 12-foot canoe, and I, I couldn't even sit in that thing. That thing was a joke. Never, never sat upright. I spent more time in the water than I did on top of the water. So the whole idea was this to be able to slide on and then when my kids take the canoe out they can easily slide this right off and so my kids could utilize this they can easily take this off with no tools and that's a whole objective i'll probably end up varnishing this just so it, it matches the current varnish on here like a lot of varnish left i don't think i'll do anything with these washers i'll just leave them stick out but i'm thinking of uh maybe building a tray on here like a table and then that way I can slide the tackle box back and forth between my son and I when we go fishing I mean it is a pretty good size flat surface I know I could make something make it work I've already made rock rocket launchers or rod holders that holds three rods and it just hangs on the uh, inside of the canoe and so all three rods are sticking straight up in the air and not sitting on the bottom of the canoe because that would be in a way with my feet. That's it. Those are the outriggers for a 16 foot canoe that are removable for transportation purposes. Any questions, anything you'd like to know, leave a comment below. Uh, otherwise, give me a thumbs up if you like this video and like the idea. Uh, again, the wood I used was poplar on the top and then a piece of pine on the bottom. And then the thin strip that gave me the um, spacing between the two pieces is oak. And that was from a, that was a scrap piece of wood I had from doing some cabinet work. All right, big guy, DIY Robert, signing off. Keep the paddles in the water and the bottom side of the canoe down.